right, this morning we're starting with Christine Lee, who's going to tell us about characterizing the stable Kovanov homology of infinite torus rays. Thank you very much. Um, thank you also to the organizers for the invitation. So I will start with saying that this is joint work with Carmen Sokral, uh, Nico Gonzalez, Brenina Sazanovic, and Melissa Young. So um, this talk is about a very simple question, um, which is what is the Kovanov homology of torus rays? So uh, why might I be interested in this? So it started with um, this result by Abhijit and Ilya on the Mahler measure of the Jones polynomial and the color Jones polynomial, pol polynomial under twisting. Okay, so I'm gonna start with that. And then, but before then, I'm gonna do a super quick introduction to Kabbalah homology involving the stuff that I think um, only the things that would be necessary for the rest of the talk. Okay, so um, given the diagram at a crossing, you can choose the zero resolution and the one resolution. So for any diagram, and the example that I'm showing is the is a diagram of a hop link here, you can construct what's called a cube of resolutions um, by choosing either the zero or one resolution at each crossing to get a bunch of disjoint circles in the plane. Okay, so they're ordered by how many one resolutions homologically that you choose at a crossing. And so at fully the zero homological degree, this is not absolutely relative grading, um, you have all zero resolutions for each of the crossings. And then as you move forward in homological grading, um, you choose the one resolution, one of the crossings, and then both one resolutions at two of the crossings. Okay. So, uh, so I want to show that you can assign to each of these diagrams some vector spaces, and then you can define differentials based on cohortisms going between vector spaces that makes it into a chain complex. The chain complex is a link invariant that categorifies the Jones polynomial. So the only thing we really need for the rest of this is just to think about how big this cube is if you have a um, a uh, link with many crossings in, for, the, uh, for example, infinite force screen. That's what we're going to do this. Okay, so let F be a monic polynomial of degree n and Fk be the polynomial whose roots are the k roots of F, then the Mahler measure is the limit of this polynomial with this norm on the vector space of degree n polynomials. Now, I'll just read, yes. I'm having a hard time parsing oh, what FK mm -hmm. is. So, what are the kth roots? Kth roots of uh, If you take the kth power of F, and then you look at the roots of the kth power, and then you look oh. at the corresponding polynomial that has roots the those roots. Okay. Yes. 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 Uh, uh, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, this is the Mahler measure, and Abhijit and Ilya show that the Mahler measure of the Jones polynomial, the color Jones polynomial converges under twisting for any link. Okay, what do they mean by twisting? You have a not diagram. You pick, you look at the intersection of a disk with any set of parallel strands. So it could be, so in this example it's two, but you can also look at n number of parallel strands and you pick them up and you twist. Um, which means that you replace whatever is inside of this tangle by what you get after twisting. And it should be a full twist. You should be putting full twist to get a new diagram. And what they showed is that Mahler measure of the Jones polynomial and the color Jones polynomial converge under, <coughs> under twisting um, for any link. In particular, the coefficient vector of the Jones polynomial and also the color Jones polynomial polynomial decomposes into fixed blocks. Okay. Right. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Is that, mm -hmm. so you oriented your link, yeah. and then the twisting mm -hmm. is... Uh, it, it doesn't matter which side of the twisting you do, there's... there's um, but you can't have them going other opposite directions when you're in the twisting. That's okay, yeah, that doesn't matter. Yeah. So, so the or orientation of your link doesn't matter? No. Yeah. What, what is the mm -hmm. reason for considering this Measure. Is it something okay. like related to volume? Yes, like I'm, I'm getting to that. So, so the reason I'm sort of skipping over the model measure is because they were just looking for something um, that will behave in a way when you do this twisting operation, and it's really related to volume. Okay, 
So um, it's not as important like that it's the model measure, it's just this is the, the thing that they're computing that they show convergence that kind of behaves like fault. Right? So the thing that's interesting, um, I think, is they started with noticing that the coefficient vectors have this behavior and decompose it into stable plots as you add more and more full twists if you look at the Jones polynomial and the color Jones polynomial. So um, in the sense that if you start with five full twists, this is for the same knot, you have these blocks that keep getting farther and farther as you add more and more full twists. Okay. Um, so they were observing this behavior and the idea is of course, um, the bottom conjecture, you're, you're trying to uh, relate things about the Jones polynomial or related quantum invariance to the behavior of volume. Okay. So um, there's a classic theorem by um, Thurston, hyperbolic gain surgery theorem, that says that if you take a fully augmented link and you do surgery on those augmentation circles so that you add twisting to the original diagram, then the volume of these twistings converge to the volume of the augmented link. Okay. So the question is, so, so there's a convergence of volume, and the question they were considering is, um, in view of the volume conjecture, which I'll give a really short statement in just a second, what converges for the Jones polynomial and the color Jones polynomial? Okay. So, um, and it turns out that the thing that they considered is the Mahler measure, and it does converge. It's kind of related to both, but it's not exactly the model. So, all right. So, I think what's helpful is anybody needs reminding. The Wong conjecture says that. So this is due to Kashayev and the two Murakamis. which says that for a hyperbolic knot, two pi times this limit that you can obtain by plugging in this root of unity into the color Jones polynomial. is equal to the volume of the knot. Right. So what is this n? Um, for n equals 1, this is the Jones polynomial. And if you let n vary over the natural numbers from 1 to infinity, then you get a sequence of polynomials that you assign to a knot that's called the color Jones polynomial. And the statement is that if you take this limit, then you recover the hyperbolic volume of the knot. Okay, so um, so you might have many questions. Do we even know the convergence? No, <laughs> we don't know. Um, why this root? Well, because if you plug in some other roots, it turns out that there are papers that says that um, the growth of the degree, so the growth of polynomial, the value of polynomial, when you plug in the other roots of unity or other numbers, it's actually not exponential. Okay, so you can't actually recover anything meaningful in terms of um, in, in terms of in terms of the volume by taking this limit. And then okay, also what do we know? Um, what examples do we have? I think the most recent one is up to um, seven cross Iotuki. I don't know if other people they do you know any other ones? There, there's some links by like there's some Olo links. Are those friends. those are zero volume there, there's some hyperbolic. Oh, there's some hyperbolic ones. ones. Yeah, yeah, by Van der Veen. Right. Um, so the first example, I don't, I don't want to go through, but like the first example um, for is proven for the figure eight now by uh, Ekholm. Yeah, and then since then there have been a series of papers also uh, by Roland Van der Veen and other people um, that have established the own conjecture for more knots. But we don't have an infinite um, class of examples where the volume is non-zero, where the Volume conjecture is true. Okay, 
But anyhow, this is the motivation. Um, and the problem is that both sides are very difficult. Right? Um, in terms of evaluating the Jones polynomial, which you can think of as uh, the Jones polynomial, the cable uh, of the knot, if you, because the definitions that we have are based on the diagram, you can look at it as being defined from the Jones polynomial of the cable of the original knot diagram. Um, so that's, that's difficult to evaluate, right? Because the original Jones polynomial is also difficult to evaluate, so it just makes it worse. Um, this side is hard, this side is also hard, um, and so we just have a hard problem. Okay, but anyway, um, this was their motivation, but interestingly, in a different direction, when people were considering the Kavana homology of Torrance links, um, they showed kind of like a categorified behavior of these fixed coefficient blocks that stabilize and separate as we do more and more twist. So how this is captured um, is first by uh, the result by Stochich in 2007 that says that the <coughs> homology groups of the infinite towards link <clears throat> stabilizes. So, sorry? So I'm gonna say, oh, okay. yeah, so, so n, n is the number of spans, and then k is the number of full twists. Okay, so you get, you get the torus links. And what we mean, so what, what is meant by stability of this, in this context is that the homology groups are isomorphic for low i. So as long as you look at homological grading that is low enough, then the homology groups are isomorphic from k full twists on m strands to k plus one full strand um, full twists on i strands. Is there a degree shift when you have i there, right i? There's a degree shift for sure. Yeah. So this is up to a degree shift. This is like the. I mean, categorified picture that you showed us uh, earlier. Yeah, yeah. So, so um, that, that's that's actually a really good way. So, so the the block separating is also captured this degree shift in the decategorization. Right. Okay. Now, are, are there any questions about this? So, um, Rosansky took this a step further, and he essentially proved like a more general result that implies the previous result that says that the stable homology of infinite torus rays exists by defining it as the direct limit of the directed system that you can take from just looking at the Kavanaugh homology of each of these torus things. So um, if you think about torus links and just, just finite, not infinite torus links, just, just look at finitely many full twists you have a well-defined Kavana homology. Um, and what he did is that he showed that there is a direct system, directed system, with corresponding maps F I J um, that satisfies all of the requirements you need for a directed system and so a directed limit exists and that's what he calls the stable Kovana homology of course Going back to Elsa's question about grading yeah. from uh, mm -hmm. a, a minute ago, yeah. right, if the gradings are shifting as your, I guess, n increases, yeah. do you just... Is, is he just shifts it back. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, so for every single one of these groups, we just shift it back. Okay. So that, so that um, in particular, some of these maps from lower number of twisting to higher number of twisting is just uh, included. And so what you need to do in order to make that map work is just to shift the gradient back by multiplying by a polynomial. So this is not, it's not very easy to do. Yeah. Okay, so um, you have the rest of the system, um, you have the directed limit 
And so you have a well-defined homology that comes from this infinite construction. And it happens, so he also shows that this stable homology actually categorifies the dome simple projector. So this is very interesting that infinite twisting in some sense, recovers the jones wenzel projector, which is what you can use to define the color Jones Um, The other thing that is interesting, and he says, is, is um, but he doesn't really explicitly show, is that each of these finitely many full twists on n strands, the homology, homology of that approximates the categorification of the jones wenzel projector, which is the stable homology that is delivered. So, um, you could use the Kaplan homology of finally many fold twists to approximate the Jones Wenzel projector, but he doesn't say explicitly how. So, maybe something that's useful, and this is why I was interested in this problem. Okay, so just a really quick definition of the Jones Wenzel projector we have the temporary leaf algebra on n. So n strands is going to be complex vector space of nonlinear sums of link entangled diagrams in this D. Um, modulo the Kaplan bracket scaling relations, where the algebra structure is given by multiplication by stacking. And so you just stack two disks and identify points. What is the jones wenzel projector? The jones wenzel projector is a unique element that is really, you should think about it, it's represented by a box. But this really represents an element inside of this vector space. So it's a sum of these elements that is characterized by these properties, meaning that if you take multiplication with any of the algebra generators containing a term back, then you get zero. And then similarly, um, as a presentation by the algebra generators, uh, the identity element, which is just n parallel strands, appears once and only once inside of the presentation. Okay, and then this next property is the projector, is its eigenvalue property, where you compose the projector by itself and you get it back. And then this last part is just setting the value <clears throat> of this projector under closure. So every time you see n next to a strand, that means n parallel strand. And the reason I'm showing you this is is to sort of motivate how Rosansky could show that um, the stable homology of torus knot actually recovers the jones wenzel projector. So there is a result that looks at the categorical version of this, right? So everything gets replaced by complexes, and zero is replaced by homotopy, homotopically equivalent to zero, to the trivial complex. And uh, Cooper and Krushkal show that as long as your complex satisfies the categorical versions of these defining properties of the projector, then it is a categorification of the Jones Wenzel projector. So this is how this is how um, this is how Rosalski could show that that this complicated complex that he constructed and shows that it exists um, is is indeed uh, a categorification of the Jones Wenzel projector. So if you did categorify it, it would cover this just based on this defining property. Right. So the other motivation, um, which is also really interesting um, from people just studying the structure of quantum homology of torus and without without sort of even thinking about volume or anything like that, um, is this conjecture by Gorski, Oblankov, and Rasmussen uh, that says that this differential graded vibrated algebra with this vibrating, so you have these generators, and you just sort of define a chain complex based on these relations, that the homology of this differential graded algebra is isomorphic to the stable Kavana homology of torus. And so you can just take it as is. This, this statement is very mysterious to me. Um, I so it comes from the algebraic geometry of the Hilbert scheme of points, and that's the end of what I understand about it. Okay, so I'm just gonna say this because you, you might hear it from this context, like this is why they're interested in it. Um, and I, I don't know, understand the algebraic geometry behind it. Yeah. Oh, the cycle? Yeah. You mean D of UM2? Yes, I mean D of UM2. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So 
Um, this is very mysterious, okay, uh, but it has been proven by Hogan Kukan for Kovanov Rosansky homology. This is the categorification of the Humphrey PT polynomial that's triple equated. Okay, for some reason, this statement is easier to prove in that setting, um, but it is not known for the case of Kovanov homology. Um, and the problem is that the differentials, to show that the differentials really have this structure, so this should be a D, not a B, um, it's difficult with the method that, that he is using to construct the stable homology of the virtual space. So I think I've given you two motivations, um, and so I can state the main theorem which is that the stable Kavanaugh homology has this form, as is written. Okay, so this is a little bit hard to um, parse because it's hard for, it's hard to represent sort of infinite objects. <clears throat> so the notation that I'm using is so. So let's let's think about um, the case of two p torus lists, right? So we have something that is um, n equals two for the number of strands. So we're looking at something that is sigma one k in the brain notation. Um, and the shorthand is that I would represent a Kaufman state by just doing, by just having a bunch of ones, and then I would bar one of the numbers if I choose the one resolution. So I'm representing Kaufman states by this notation just because it's too much to write it like this, and it should also be distinguished from the ray generators. And so if I have a bunch of ones and I bar it, this represents a bunch of A resolutions. Um, and then I choose a bunch of zero resolutions, and then I choose the one resolution at the end. One, two, three, four, one, two. So each of the each of these represents a Kaufman state that, as I said before, um, generates the categorification complex for quantum homology. So similarly, if I have like one, two, one, two, um, and then the point is that if we look at the temporary lead monoid, which is just words generated on E1 through E to the N minus one modulo relations, EI going to EI squared, EI going to EI, EI plus or minus one, EI, and then commutation, EI EJ going to EJ EI. So maybe it's a good idea to remind everybody what one of those EI is. Okay. So this is an EI, and I don't want to represent an element by something that is like this barring notation because that gets really clunky when I'm talking about infinite torus links. So I just want to represent whatever diagram that I end up getting as an element in a temporary lead monoid using this notation. So EI represents something that looks like this, and then we have all these equivalences based on isotopy in a temporary lead monoid. And if we, so, so this statement is about 
how a complex that is potentially infinite is homotopy to an equivalent complex where at each homological grading, you are generating it by these elements in the template monoid that remains a fixed number no matter how many full twists you add. Can I? Yes. So, uh -huh. <coughs> so, the, so the, you're saying you have like a finite generating? Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, yes. So for each homological gradient, I have a finite generating set, and they're exactly of this form. Um, since it's a lot of a uh, lot of things to I'm just going to show you some pictures. And I think proofs, like the, the proof of this statement is the least interesting part of this talk. So I'm just going to, after showing you pictures, I'll, I'm going to show you um, what else we can do with it, conclude from this. So let's look some pictures. So we're looking at infinitely many twistings. And the idea is that no matter how many full twists I add, this is the n equals 2 case, the complex just looks like this. For each homological rating, we have the same number of generators. And then the maps between each generator repeats. So it actually becomes periodic. Um, normally, if you evaluate the clown homology of the 2p torus link, you have to do You would have to, I kind of try to show one part of it here. You have to expand all of the crossings, right? But with this result, you only need this. Um, similarly, oh, and then the other thing I wanted to say was that the Jones Wenzel projector on two strands is infinite dimensional in the positive direction. And so you want to imagine that the complex for the whole projector actually keeps repeating. But if I only have finitely many full twists, then I can recover the Kaplan homology of that torus link by truncating this complex. So truncating just means like I <clears throat> maybe take part of the part of the differentials and then the complex just terminates at some point, and then it's zero everywhere else. OK, here's the n equals 3 case um, that I can completely write out. Again, no matter how many full twists you add, the stable of homology remains fixed width with periodic differentials. And you can recover the, the finite case where you have finally many full twists on the torus links by truncating this complex. So this is kind of a way to sort of reverse engineer the Kavanaugh homology of torus links on finally many full twists from the stable homology that gives you the categorification of the projection. Um, and it makes explicit what Lorzanski meant in his result when he say you can approximate the categorification of the jones wenzel projector by the categorification of force. Uh, yes? So, so the, the, the K is noting full twist. So if you were to take the closure of any truncation that you're talking about, yes. you're talking about a three component link. Yes. So mm -hmm. what if I wanted to actually get a, a, a grade whose closure is a knot, I mean, like a torus knot? Um, then you would have to take the, the co-prime. Number of full twists, yeah. Uh, no, but a full twist is going to continue the, uh, uh, the closure being a knot. Yeah. So if I like, I if I wanted like the you know the, the three four torus knot, mm -hmm. I mean that that doesn't fit into this pattern, does it? It does. You just cut it. You just cut it off here. Yeah. But I thought you said it was okay. But I thought you were saying it was a full twist. You're only dealing with full twists. So you can get, get any of your three strands. Yes, I can get any of the, yeah. Or yeah. three, three strands yeah. or something. Just no, depending I, on where along there you Yes, go. yes, yeah. Um, so the reason I said full twist is because you're, because I'm still thinking about the construction by Abhijit and Vendelia, where they take some strands in the knot diagram, and then you need a full twist in order to preserve the fact that you started with the knot. That's 
the point is, you, any any of but the any, three yeah, strands. But any, yeah, but for this, any of the, yes, any of the strands, I, I can just cut them. Yeah, you just, you just truncate it differently. So, yeah. What's the periodicity of the next one? Five periodic. Um, yeah, two. Yeah. And what are the differential? Two the and minus one, yeah. Oh, two yeah. and minus one. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. What are the maps? Um, these maps are just saddles. So, so you're, you're going from each factor to each factor? Exactly. Bias, so, like so because the differential is like vibrating, so it has to preserve the J rating, we have to push forward homological degree. You can't have anything more complicated than just like a saddle going forward. So from here to here, you just put a saddle in order to map to here. Another saddle going to map to here. Whereas this map is going to be uh, what's called a dot hop map, where you put um, where you put a dot, which corresponds to adding a handle. Yeah. So um, they're just maps that you can work out if you know that. Your generators look like this, and you have to go forward and come up. I think. So, uh, so we can write out all of the generators, and we can also give. So this is what we're really after, because there are already a lot of results about what the generators could be for a complex like this. Um, with our method, we can also give an assisted description of the programs, <coughs> which uh, was something that Hogan Camp, in his progress on the GOR conjecture, could not do, is to find the shape, uh, is to give an explicit description of the Right. And then there's, of course, from here, you can get a new proof of the stability results that's more explicit, right? Um, his original method uses a lot of multi-cone constructions um, and then has to prove that all of these multi-cones of complexes actually have a direct limit. This is much more, it's much more straightforward. Okay, and then uh, for anybody who knows Palma SKS, transverse link invariant, we can show that um, for braids on four strands and five strands, um, Palm Nesquia's transverse link invariant is not equal to zero if the braid has fractional gain with coefficient greater than zero. Um, we have the result written down for four strands and five strands, and I don't see any reason why it doesn't work for, for all numbers of strands. So, um, About, yes. Like, if we, this is just a really fun question. Like, what what is the nature of the differential? Is it like a specific category theoretic differential where you're taking like the um, homology of a morphism complex, or is this like a, something more concrete? It's completely explicit. So it's just those. So I showed you these maps for. It's just those maps. Oh, it's those. Yeah, it's just those maps. They're just they're just uh, local saddles that you can explicitly write out, and um, I'm just going to use the technical term of dot hop maps where you add handles. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's the difference. Okay. Those are the differentials uh, for each term. So we can write out for like if you give me a generator first, there's like a numeration of all generators of each complex, and then for each generator I can say okay the map goes from this generator to this other generator, and it's of this form, which is this saddle between these. Why, so, is yes. <clears throat> why is it a differential? Um, why is it a differential? Because the original maps are differential, and the method we use don't change the fact that they're differentials when we transform into a homotopy Does that mean there's signs that cancel or something? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, on the arrow? Right. So, so um, the reason why, I mean, okay. So if you believe that original Kovanov complex of the torus Link is a is a complex that has differential, right? Um, then, if if the proof method is to work based on that and reduce it to something that's homotopy equivalent, then the differentials of the result, the maps of the resulting couples will also be a different. But you should see, you 
you should be able to see that the composition is down to zero. Yeah, no, 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 no. directly, yeah, directly you can see that. Yes, yes. So, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so are you, like, I'm just trying to understand, like, are you saying, like, you can just construct those maps and then check that there? Because I got, well, I, the maps that we got is, is from reducing. Shouldn't them. you be able to see the, the, the composition of these are zero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. Um, just, if you write them out, yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. yes. Um, I, I think maybe the other problem is I didn't write them down. Yeah, here. Okay. So yeah, maybe uh, I didn't I, I don't remember exactly how the three point goes, but I can look that up. But if you look at the two strand case, the maps are very simple. So and maybe this would help. So like if I go from here to here, then that first map is just the saddle. And then if I go from here to here, then I have this map. Yeah. And then Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then I what are the notation of the dots mean? Um that means we're just just for a second. So what's this addition is that they're I can't see. Yeah, 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 you have the same dot on the, they're not, you add a handle on the dot ends up on the same thing as the next zero? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so these, okay. So we have diagrams, right? And pictures between them represent uh, cobordisms. Okay. So this is the saddle cobordism. This one is the same, so you, you take the same diagram, but this dot represents adding a handle like that. Yeah. So you want to think of it as like the identity map, but you add a handle on it. That that's what the that's what the map is. Yeah. And so so it's what the images are is is what results in the vector space with some rules, right? Like if you have two dots on the same component, then it goes to zero. Okay, those, those are set back. Those are not just coming from the topology of this. It's just um, rules that are called uh, Barnaton scan relations that you use to do computations with these models. Okay. So, helpful? Yeah. Very helpful. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, I figure I would talk a little bit about Hamanet's chaos invariant. Um, talk about how you could possibly get that from this setup, just knowing, because this is this is a structure theorem that's about reducing something that has infinitely many generators to something that's homotopy with only finitely many innumerable generators and differentials. Um, and then, um, then I will talk about the proof, which is very boring, but we're getting close to the end now. Okay, all right. So um, really quick thing about Honesca as a variant. Um, a transverse link is a link which is everywhere transverse to the standard contact structure. Okay. Honesca as invariant is this invariant discovered by Olga Honeneskaya that is the homology class of the element that's shown here. So you just take the oriented resolution um, of <coughs> your braid. A closed braid naturally gives a transverse link. You take the oriented resolution you consider the homology class of that specific element inside one homology. And it turns out the homology class of that guy, nowhere else, right? So Kabbalah homology is the isotopy invariant. That specific homology class is an invariant up, up, up to transverse isotope of the transverse plane. So this is a very special, this is a very, very special element of Kabbalah homology. Um, and the fractional day twist coefficient, roughly speaking, is how many times there are full twists in a specific way. Okay, so, so that's, there's just some like interesting contact geometric content in this. Okay, so 
the proof idea is to think about the twisted torus link where you have n full positive twist on B strands. This is what's going to affect the fractional thing twist coefficient, push it to be bigger. So if you have n full positive twist on B strands, no matter how many negative twists you add, as long as it's not on the same number of strands as the positive twists, um, then the fractional Dane twist coefficient is determined by the number of these positive full twists. So since it doesn't matter how many negative full twists I put on um, less than n numbers, less than b number of strands, I can let it go to infinity, and then um, from before this recovers the Jones Wenzel projector. And so this statement is just about computing the homology class of the full positive twist on these strands composed with a jones wenzel projector. Um, there is a lot of categorical things that you need to work with. I'm just not going to get into too many details for that. But it is it's sort of interesting that you can sort of go backwards and use that to compute the homology class of polymeric chaos invariant for the original twisted torus. OK, and then functoriality for polymeric chaos invariant um, can allow you to get to any transverse link with fractional thing twist coefficient bigger than 1. So you can um, what does functoriality mean? You can add or subtract, add or remove positive or negative crossings while still preserving the homology class of the polymeric chaos invariant for all these things. So I'm just going to, instead of getting too much into this, um, still low dimensional topology, but maybe a little different. So this is just something else that, that um, shows that solving these problems can, can have applications to these different areas. So, um, what is the proof? Um, it's it comes from uh, the Gaussian elimination that that Quarantan started with in terms of his fast covalent homology computation. So, if we have an isomorphism, so we have the original complex here, and we have the associated maps. Are shown in terms of matrices, so it's really just linear algebra. If any of these maps is an isomorphism, then we can reduce the original complex into a homotopy equivalent line by Gaussian elimination. So you just recompose these maps, and then you can get a much simpler thing. And then the particular Gaussian elimination we use is also very simple, and it has to do with the splitting, the splitting and merging maps of each of these states. So if I take something that is like a closed component with another just strand, and then I perform the saddle map. Then that gives an isomorphism from this element in the complex to this element. If you have an isomorphism, then you can cancel both terms of the complex. That's, that's really it. Um, and then you have the opposite map, which is when you split.
So you take one component, you put a saddle And so you're splitting one circle into two. Then you can get rid of this other Um, component in the image. So isomorphism, right? Isomorphism. Um, we take the original complex, which has many, many terms, and we have a scheme for matching, so systematically performing these Gaussian elimination on all of these isomorphisms, making sure that none of them conflict, conflict with each other to get to the final form of the homotopy of the constants. Um, and doing that also allows to just figure out what the differential is in the final complex, which is which is really the, the difficult part. Um, but with doing this systematically, you can get an explicit description of all the differential. So, so that's that's a scheme, and it has to do with just carefully sort of labeling how I'm gonna how we're gonna eliminate these parts without somehow over eliminating or not matching so each of those maps. So okay. So um I, I guess I'll end with a discussion and I wanna say except for this first item, the other parts of it is entirely so my, my collaborators are not responsible for the next part of these next projects. Okay, so I'm going to leave with this. I mean, this is a very natural one, right? Uh, <coughs> with the Gorski Oblonkov and Rasmussen conjecture, the difficult part is to know what the form of differential is. Okay, also figuring out the, the, the type of the generators that you need in order to get this structure of the differential graded algebra. Like they stated, it's difficult, but you really, there's really not a lot of information on the differential. So, of course, um, since we have explicit information about differential, it would be interesting to sort of compare and see if we can find that structure. Okay, this is a natural thing. Um, the next part that is what I find very interesting is really, so, so again, my collaborators are not responsible for this part. Uh, you, can, you can ask them about it, but know that it will be a surprise to them. Okay, so, um, so going back to the original motivation for understanding the relationship between hyperbolic volume um, and twisting, right, which actually recovers the jones wenzel projector, let's just take a very exam simple example of like a three-tangle pretzel knot. So I have pretzel knot with a bunch of twisting all in the same direction. And if we continue to add many full twists, then we know that the Jones polynomial converges to that of the same diagram with these twist regions replaced by the corresponding Jones Wenzel projection. I can do the exact same thing with the end cable of this knot. So uh, again, when, when I do n, n parallel strands and I'm taking the blackboard cable, a result, if I put a jones wenzel projector on these end strands, and I take the Kaufman bracket of this guy, I get the nth color Jones polynomial. Okay. The, hmm, the nth color Jones polynomial of this guy 
by applying a result of Willis. Um, an Islam boom. You also get that it converges to the n-cabled version. of this element, the Cochrane bracket of, of it. Um, I'm not going to say the Jones polynomial because this is not defined based on the same mechanism for, for a link. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do a, a trick that comes from one of the defining properties of the Jones-Wenzel projector and just, just to simplify this picture a little. So the color Jones polynomial converges through the same mechanism to the color Jones polynomial, well, I, I don't know what this is, um, to this guy, the Kaufman bracket of this gain element with all of these Jones principal projectors. So my question is, and maybe somebody knows, does this correspond to the volume of the augmented link? Because we know that if I do many full twists on this guy, it converges to the volume of the, of the augmented link. And what we know from this is that the color Jones polynomial converges to the evaluation of this gain, um, of this gain element in the Kaufman bracket gain algebra. This is not, this is very easy to compute. So I wonder if we can see something about the volume, the sequence of volumes are converging based on the sequence of color Jones polynomial converging. And the other thing that's interesting to me is that I can recover um, from this Kavanov complex at the end, the color Jones polynomial or the color Kavanov complex for each of these twistings for any number of twistings, like Ken was asking. So I know exactly, I can determine exactly what these are based on this. Is there going to be some relationship if I look at the volume? I don't know. I, I think that would be very, very, very interesting to see um, because that's getting a handle on the part of the volume conjecture that is uh, relating to the color Jones polynomial. And, and now with this setup, there is a way to go from here back to each of the terms in the limiting so so again I and you also might say something about what surgery means right because infinite twisting corresponds to surgery what does that mean in terms of the quantum invariant I also think that's a very interesting question so like I said this is all this part is please please don't hold my uh, collaborators accountable for it it's just me okay all right, we need to talk about it, um, and I will end here. Um, so we saw some lizards. What is this? So Ken, Ken was talking about like a animal bingo. It turns out that Florida is ranked number one for invasive species, and this is an invasive species. Okay. <laughs> Are there any additional questions? Mm -hmm. What's the measure statement again? Is, is that it converges? Yeah. Yeah. It converges. It converges to some, yeah, the number under twisting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to dredge out of my memory some mm -hmm. result about the Mailer measure of not these pretzel knots, but mm -hmm. some other three stranded pretzel knots, like maybe the minus two three Qs or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not good. Mm -hmm. But I don't remember what it is anymore if it's relevant. Oh, we, we can talk. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So. Yes. 
with your infinite you know, torus break on the strands, you have this uh, chain complex where you could truncate it to get Kovanov um, for the uh, closures yes. of any kind of yes. shortening. Yes. But can't you, what if you precompose that infinite brand and some other in -end tangle? And so then you have like, you know, the closure of that in -end tangle, but then you're looking at putting in twists or partial twists. Are you able to actually then get this complex that from which you can truncate it and get the Kovanov uh, homology of any, uh, you know, of the, the members of that twist family? That's that's a little harder because the so so the problem is like theor theoretically but not practically. So the reason you can do this, the reason it started with a Fresnel knot, and this is a very easy example, is because if you if you look at a part that doesn't have the infinite twisting, you just have two closed components. If you have a if you precompose with a more complicated tangle, then the decomposition of these uh, of the complex of the infinite torus space will be very different. It, it's going to interact with the more complicated part. It will separate, right? So it will separate into these blocks, but to compute each of these blocks will be more will be more difficult. So you, technically, you can, but then you're just saying, can I compute the quantum homology of something that's more complicated? So. But, but I can do it very easily yeah. for this. So let's, I mean, we don't know anything about all these guys, right? So that's, that's. Yeah. But it sounds like you still would expect some sort of stability, though, in, in that. For oh, sure, yeah, yeah. Because it, it's true in the decategorification that, that every, you have these decomposition into, into blocks, right? So the categorification statement of that would be computing these blocks. I'm just saying that it's not as easy to compute these blocks when you have more complicated. As a practical matter. As a practical matter, yeah. As a practical. But in principle, it still would. Yes, it still would. Yes. Okay. yes. I'm not saying I want to do it. <laughs> <by hand. laughs> Nobody wants. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. is, is there a hope that you can prove this um, course the overloop of Grassley's and conjecture using your theorem? Possible, but there's some tricky. So so the problem is that. I can get the, why is it not immediate, right? Uh, the problem is that what, let's, let's stare the conjecture a little bit. So the question is, okay. Um, the hard part is what, is, what corresponds to these um, generators? So you might think it's just one of those guys. You might think it's one of those guys, but it's not. So in the progress that people have made, one of those generators that recovers that structure is actually um, a whole segment of this. So UM is like uh, a truncated version of this complex. And then, so if you want to recover the differential structure, you actually have to figure out how the, how collectively the mass act on a whole segment of this. That, that's the, maybe maybe it's clear when we look at the three strands. So one generator corresponds to this chunk. And then you have to figure out, so even if I know all the mass in between, it's still really hard to, to recover that exact same differential structure that's in the conjecture. Is it always like the period? The period? No, oh, okay. no, it's not, no, oh. yeah, it, that's not, yeah. <laughs> Which <laughs> that'd, be nice. yeah, that'd be nice, yeah. <laughs> but it's not it's not a it's not a straightforward thing. Yeah. When you say chunk, you mean it's a linear combination of so. I just mean like the the sequence of these things connected by arrows. Is yeah. a certain sub complex of the <coughs> GOR that I'm because Yes, a sub complex, a truncation so so like this this thing infinitely repeating is the whole complex. And then just looking from here to here is what I mean by a chunk. But U M mm -hmm. is an element. No, but no, U M. No, okay. But how you identify U M is actually this whole thing. That's that's what's really hard about this. Yeah, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. Do I start to check out what's every thing? Is there a complex much smaller than this? This is the smallest 
complex um, compared to any other existing complex that's been constructed. Well, I don't know how to prove their conjecture. Compared to, compared to all the projects that's been made, yes. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can reduce it further, but I don't have a proof of that. I don't know how to prove that, that it cannot be solved. But I think this is pretty much how it's solved. Thank you for speaking again.